bigger is always better. Well, that's not actually the case when it comes to living creatures. Of course, there are some advantages to being enormous in size. For instance, it's a lot easier to find food when you are very large, as you can cover a larger area in a short amount of time. There aren't really many predators, so you're not as vulnerable as the smaller animals around you. But there are some cons. When the climate changes and food becomes more scarce and your habitat changes, it is a lot harder to adapt to these changes when you are a gigantic species. And this was actually the case with Gigantopithecus blackie, the largest ape species that has ever lived. My name is Kaylee, and in today's video, I'm going to tell you everything that we know about the largest species of apes that have ever roamed the planet and how they eventually disappeared. So the first discovery of this species did not go in the same fashion as the discovery of most species. Usually we have an excavation at a location where remains are found and then later on it's revealed that these remains belong to a new species. But the discovery of this species went a tad differently. It was the German-Dutch paleontologist Gustav Heinrich Ralf von Koenigswald that found strange large teeth at truck stores in China that were being sold as dragon teeth because of course we call an unidentified tooth a dragon tooth. That makes so much sense. So these teeth had few similarities with human teeth. So at first, for a short while, it was thought that they may have belonged to a giant human ancestor. But upon closer inspection, after the discovery of mandibles, including teeth, it was concluded that these teeth actually belong to an extinct species of giant apes. So excavations have been carried out since, and eventually during excavations in caves in southern China, more remains were uncovered. And now there's a total of four partial jaws, nearly 2,000 large molars, canines, and other teeth that belong to this species that is now known as Gigantopithecus blackii. They are placed in their own genus of Gigantopithecus, within the subfamily of Ponginae, and the particular name of the species within the genus is Blackie. They are being seen as a sister genus of the Pongo, and if you have seen my video where I explained the human evolutionary timeline from the earliest great apes until us modern humans, you would know that the genus of Pongo is the same genus where the living orangutans are being placed. Due to the fact that nearly all fossils have been discovered in southern China, it is believed that they might have been restricted to that area, but similar looking fossils have been discovered at other locations, like for instance northern Vietnam and Thailand. The discovered remains from southern China have been dated and it seems like Gigantopithecus blackii lived between 2 million and 300,000 years ago. The possible remains in Vietnam and Thailand are younger and therefore not only could they enlarge the living area of this species, like their habitat, but it could also point to a longer survival time, possibly as recently as 100,000 years ago. So it's more than likely that Gigantopithecus lived together with Homo erectus in the same landscape around the same time. Gigantopithecus blackii lived in this area for quite a long time, more than 1.5 million years, and most likely they were thriving as a species, domineering their environment. Which isn't hard to imagine when looking at their immense size and the fact that they did not have any natural predators as they were simply too large. You might wonder at this point actually in the video, how large were they on average? Because a species could be big. But at what point will they be called gigantic or enormous? Well, knowing that the average height and weight of a human for a man globally is 171 centimeters, which equates to roughly five foot and seven inches for my American viewers. And the average weight is approximately 75 kilograms with this height. 
which equates to roughly 165 pounds for a male. So yes, I did take the global average height and the weight accompanying the people of this height. And this is not the case for the averages per country as each country has their own average height and weight but my channel has become quite international, so I feel like a global average is best. So knowing the global averages for a male modern human, for his height and his weight, I think it's time to look at the average size of Gigantopithecus blackie. They averaged a height of approximately three meters, which equates to nine feet and eight inches. And the average weight for Gigantopithecus blackie, and this was really, this blew me away, was somewhere between 200 and 300 kilograms, which equates to between 441 and 661 pounds. So to call this species gigantic or enormous is really, truly very fitting as they are nearly double the height of an average male and more than double, maybe even at times triple the weight of an average male. They would have relied on a lot of food to sustain themselves, as a bigger body definitely requires more food. But there is another risk that comes with being this size. It seems that when we look at mammals and the bigger the species, it seems like the less offspring they get, the bigger they are. Therefore, the population tends to be smaller and can be affected a lot quicker due to changes in the environment, uh, changes in the climate, changes in their food sources and more. So this was a real problem for Gigantopithecus blackie because some 300,000 years ago, the climate started to become very unstable. Habitats with local flora and fauna seem to change and this was the case as well in southern China. The landscape used to be quite tropical with lush forests and within this forest habitat there was an abundance of food for Gigantopithecus blackie. But approximately 300,000 years ago this tropical forest started to turn into a savanna landscape which revealed a fatal handicap of Gigantopithecus blackie, as their size required a certain amount of food which was no longer available to them. So Gigantopithecus blackie seemed to have mostly been a fruit eater and they were unable to completely adapt to the new food sources that were available to them. In this savanna landscape they had grass, roots and leaves that became the dominant food sources and not as much fruit and this way it, they became unable to sustain themselves. It seems like their size eventually was their downfall as their smaller relatives like the orangutan were able to survive this climatic change. They were able to adapt to these new food sources due to their slow metabolism and the ability to survive on limited food. So the combination of their smaller population size and their inability to adapt to new food sources to sustain themselves, the species of Gigantopithecus blackie seemed to suffer what they call a demographic death. Not enough individuals to continue the line, not enough food to survive. So there is speculation in the scientific community that the giant sloth that I have mentioned at least in my video about the footprints in White Sands, New Mexico, but that the giant sloth suffered the same fate. Every animal has a limit to how big they can become before they get too big to survive. So I would also like to add in a little bit of extra information in this video, as for a long time it was believed that there was another species in the genus of Gigantopithecus under the name of Pilaspurensis. So fossils of this species were discovered in 1969 and they were placed in the Gigantopithecus genus as they had some similarities with the Gigantopithecus blackie fossils. So the fossil that was discovered in 1969 was discovered in the Sivalik hills in northern India and this was a mandible dating back to approximately 8.6 million years ago. 
The fossil was later on placed in the Dryopithecus genus, which is yet another genus of extinct great apes. But in 2003, Australian anthropologist David W. Cameron placed Gigantopithecus bilaspurensis in its own genus of Indopithecus and gave this species the new name of Indopithecus giganteus. This decision eventually left the genus of Gigantopithecus monotypic, with only one species, Gigantopithecus blackie. And unless we find a sister species, this genus will remain monotypic. There is, however, another possible factor in the demise of Gigantopithecus blackie, and this might be the human species of Homo erectus, as they have found to inhabit the same area in southern China, as early as 800,000 years ago at least. And although these oldest remains of Homo erectus in this area are scarce, that doesn't mean that they didn't encounter each other and didn't have an effect on the evolution of Gigantopithecus blackie. After the demise of Gigantopithecus blackie some 300,000 years ago, the prevalence of human activity in this area increased and therefore it is speculated that both species competed over the resources that became scarcer around this point in time. And with a small species like Homo erectus, being our size, being a smaller mammal that was able to create tools for hunting, they probably had a lot less difficulty adapting to the climate change in their habitat and adapting to the new food sources, and therefore they survived while Gigantopithecus blackie succumbed. Remains of Gigantopithecus blackie have also been quite the source for cryptozoology stories about the American Bigfoot or the Tibetan Yeti. And these myths and folklore was, of course, strengthened by the massive mandibles of Gigantopithecus blackie. It was pointed to as being the evidence, the pieces of evidence for, you know, yetis and Bigfoot having lived ever. Bigfoot at a time was even named Gigantopithecus canadensis by anthropologist Grover Krantz. Although this was not supported by the scientific community at all, nor by the amateurs, and therefore this name never really stuck. The largest ape that ever roamed the planet that we know of so far, Gigantopithecus blackie, an enigmatic species that came to a brutal demise after the climate changed and the habitat changed and their food sources became scarce and they were no longer to sustain themselves. The bigger you grow, the harder you fall. Will we have a new gigantic species roaming the planet one day? One can only wonder. But with that said, if you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like these. And click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click a video in the description down below or a video in the end card. I have it set on best for viewer and therefore YouTube caters to you and whatever it is that you enjoy watching. I would also like to say a massive thank you to my patrons and my channel members. And if you enjoy my work, consider becoming a patron or a channel member. And with that said, this was Gigantopithecus blackie in the genus of Gigantopithecus and yeah, the largest ape to have ever roamed the planet that we know of so far. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.